Well, as I said, uh, when we're at the boulders, the whole point of the trip is to throw some light, illuminate on uh, the familiar. And uh, this is Scarborough. This is only 10 minutes from campus. And I've already heard from several people that they didn't know it was here. Anyway, this is Lake Ontario. And um, there's severe erosion problems along here because the level of the lake is slowly rising through time. It's about 25 centimeters every 100 years. Um, and that's because the outlet of the lake to the east near Kingston is slowly rising. And the reason is because of this big ice sheet again. Ice sheets are thick. I mean, the last one over here was about two kilometers in thickness. And that's a lot of weight. So what do you think that does to the Earth's crust? Remembering that there's soft mantle material underneath the crust. It pushes it down. So we've got this very relatively thin, brittle crust. You know, it's about 70 kilometers thick, which sounds like a lot, but isn't. And then this very soft mantle material underneath, and the crust is pushed down. And um, when the ice sheet was here, where we are was about 400 meters lower in elevation. And then once the ice sheet retreats, this area rebounds and the Kingston area is rebounding and that's raising the sill over which the lake has to flow. So this lake level is rising. Whether you're dealing with sea level or lakes, if the water level's rising, you get cliffs, you get erosion, and that's classically the case along the bluffs. So you'll see all these weird um, berms, these built structures down there. I think they're pretty ugly, um, but they are designed to prevent erosion. When the ice sheet was in this area, big lakes, icebergs, and uh, if you look over there, you'll, you'll see um, well, you don't see, but you can find little fossils in it, actually. Sometimes we, we have to reconstruct environment by reference to fossil types that are in sediments. And uh, we find what we call ostracods. Some of you biologists may know about ostracods. They're little, uh, they're called sea shrimps. They're tiny little things. They live in the water column, they're out there. And then they die and then they fall down in the sediment. And they tell us that when the ice was down here, we had uh, lots of icebergs floating around, very cold water, lots of sediment coming into those waters. Um, and then underneath, uh, you'll see some more sands. What, do you, what, what can you see in the sands? Are there any uh, structures or anything that are of interest? Yeah, there are lines in there, aren't there? And they're called beds, beds. So we, we can now identify bedded sands. So they tell us the direction in which the water was flowing that deposited those sands. And those sands can be traced all the way along the bluffs. You can trace them up to Newmarket in the, in the, in the subsurface underground. And they belong to a huge delta which we call the Scarborough Delta. Um, but this is a ravine, and uh, Toronto is well known for its ravines, right? Like the Rouge, the Don, the Humber, and so on. And they're all the result of the changes in lake level. Remember the, the Iroquois that we're standing on? This is where the lake used to be. And then the level fell dramatically. This, this is an example of what we call a stratigraphic column. Stratigraphic column. It simply shows the arrangement in time of different layers. So it's all relative ages. Remember that? Relative ages, this is older, 
at the bottom and then younger stuff on top. And there are some ages, absolute ages there in thousands of years. But this is what people come from around the world to look at from Scarborough Bluffs. And um, what you're looking at here are tall cliffs made out of the Sunnybrook Diamond. Sunnybrook, it's the same unit we saw at the previous stop. But these are, to cut a long story short, glaciolacustrine deposits. So if you think about Alaska, where ice margins are coming down and ending in the sea or Antarctica, that's what this part of the world looked like during the last glaciation, with a big ice sheet coming down, deep lakes in front of it, icebergs carving off, floating away. And these are all the bottom sediments that accumulated on the floors of those lakes. So you can find nicely laminated sediments. See the banding in there? It's very clear on a day like this. And um, that records a successive deposition of layers building up the floor of the lake. And you'll find the odd boulder in there which was dropped by an iceberg. We talk about ice rafted boulders. Okay, so that's Sunnybrook. And um, on a day like this, when the winds are from the uh, east, big waves hitting the bottom of the cliffs, and you'll see active erosion, see the blocks that have come off. And you'll notice, we talked about the uh, bedding, but you'll notice too that there are lines running vertically. See those cracks? We call them joints. And they are neotectonic. What does neo mean? New, right. So these are the product of the movement of North American plate, which is creating stresses in those sediments. And so the sediments over time actually crack. And um, the cracks often dictate the, the shape of the blocks that fall off. So, you know, we've done plate tectonics. Uh, it's still continuing here because where we are is always on the move. It sets up stresses in sediments and rocks. They become fractured. So, you know this word aquifer? What is, what is an aquifer? Yeah, there's lots of water stored in aquifers. That's where we get drinking water from outside the city. If you live in the city, you get your drinking water from out there. Good luck. <laughs> um, that's an aquifer. Now, when you see that column, you've got to imagine that these layers go back to the north. Okay, you're seeing what we call the stratigraphy that underlies a large part of southern South Ontario. Okay, so imagine all the urban air activities going on on top, all the agricultural activities. Okay, now these are what we call aquitards. Aquitards, it's a layer which doesn't allow water to move through easily. So that's that reference to tight. If something's tight, uh, it means it doesn't allow groundwater through. You can't use it for drinking water. There just isn't enough water. And it used to be thought that these were good um, protection for the underlying aquifers. But uh, as Cathy touched on, all the urban contaminants, gasoline that's leaking out of uh, tanks, uh, spills, road salt, it's all ending up down in the underlying aquifers. So you've got to protect those aquifers from surface activities that might introduce contaminants.